as a wizard, one has to constantly wonder how much of the truth to tell people. The reason being is that most people have a very confined scope of thinking. And what concerns them is usually kind of contained in like a sphere. And for the most part, around a lot of people, a sphere is just around their head. And sometimes they can expand their sphere so that they're thinking about others. But for the most part, at this point in human evolution, most human beings have this sphere around their head and they never leave it. And so if you're bringing forth a truth or information that does not exist within their bubble, they either don't believe you or they, they can't bring the information in and that's what cognitive dissonance is. Doesn't matter what kind of information you're getting, if it's gonna burst your bubble, so to speak, you're not gonna let it in. So the, the membrane is closed. And so wizards are usually attempting to unify a particular segment of the society to defend themselves from usually another segment of society that wants to oppress the other segment of society. That's about as simple as you can get in terms of human interaction at the higher levels. It's like one group over here is trying to do something to another group or a larger group. It depends. One group can be, usually it's a small, organized, intelligent, hidden group. And they manipulate in the background while the large group is kind of like, oh, what's going on? Uh, we don't know how to deal with this. And they generally don't. So the wizard or wizards have to come in and assist the segment of society to protect themselves from another segment of society. And if you look behind me <clears throat> and you see this nice big ring, this is the ring from Lord of the Rings. And it is the essence of that story. It is the primary reference point because the story of Lord of the Rings is about Frodo attempting to go on a quest to destroy this ring. And this ring is the one ring of power for Sauron, which is, uh, symbolic of what we're going through right now because the ring of power is the group of greedy banksters families and institutions that have created a stranglehold through the banking system through usury through the central banks to control the planetary financial system, the currency system. And if you do this, you basically control the planet. And if you look at most of the problems that we're facing today, it's because of uh, such a gross use, wrong use of the majority of the money and what they call money that is flowing on this planet. And so if we don't do something about that collectively, we will, uh, the, the level of slavery that we will experience is going to be greater and greater as the technological inventions and advancements make the science of control. So a very few can control a huge amount of people gets too intelligent to deal with, especially by the lone individual in society. And so I'm hoping I have your attention. I'm hoping that you're open to receive information that you are going to need to get out of the predicament that you are in. The forces that we are dealing with cannot be interpreted through your normal method of thinking because you don't devise plans to ruin countries. You don't have at your 
fingertips uh, 5,000 tanks and 2,000 airplanes that can go bomb anyone that you point your finger to. The average human being does not think in such terms. And so when the average human being is, is attempting to understand the thinking of those that are trying to oppress you, you miss the boat. You, you, you have to create a level of thinking that looks at our species as a whole. And then you're going to jump above their level of thinking. But if you remain at your level of thinking, you are going to lose because your level of thinking is below their level of thinking. They are thinking more intelligently than you. They are thinking more intelligently than us. They have designs and plans that have been in there for hundreds of years, perhaps thousands. And there's a science of how to remain in control. And there is exactness to their plan and how and why they do what they do to keep their power. And now, because of this internet, because we can create our own media, they are in a position where enough people around the planet can understand at the same time who the real culprits are. And that is their greatest fear. And so they are using distraction to get the minds of the masses of the people focused on something other than them. You have to go back to this event, 9-11, to truly understand what is happening right now. This, like COVID, was an example of what happens when the combined might of the fully owned media is focused on one event and then amplifies and magnifies the event to the whole world's attention and gives forth a certain narrative about what the event is, what does it mean, and what are the results of this going to happen. And if you don't look at a string of events, and if you don't look at history, perhaps through a lens that is not distorted by the continual brainwashing of the war propaganda, that you can come to a point where you realize that there are a group of groups that have a devious agenda for our species and especially us. And if we do not do something about it in our own hands, then we are assigning the next several generations of human beings to be slaves in a manner we could not even comprehend. Oh, but you know, context is everything. And for us to speak is for you to start to pay attention to what I have been calling the very secret plan. And my guess is for the most part, you have no idea what this plan is. Why would you? Why would you pay attention to what I'm saying? And this goes back to where I started in terms of how much truth do you want to tell people? because most people cannot handle truth in large doses because it disturbs the foundation of their whole life. And in order for a wizard to bring forth a certain amount of understanding so that people can move from there it has to be done over time in small steps in such a way that the individual or group is not overwhelmed by the severity of the problem and their feeling of helplessness within this. Because when anyone is confronted with a problem too large outside of their scope of thinking, then they become overwhelmed and they shut down. They cannot think of accomplishing the goal because they don't know how. If 
if you see a mountain in front of you and you have no shovel and you are being asked to move the mountain you will walk away in despair even if your life depended upon it which oftentimes it does so we as conscious, aware human beings need to extend our scope of thinking to include one another and to understand that together we can do something about this, but we need a mutual reference point to organize around. And that is something which as a wizard I am offering the collective as a methodology to deal with this problem we are all facing. But first we have to look at what do we think is possible? Because what you think is possible is the general framing for what you're going to accomplish in your life. And for a lot of people, they don't aim high. They don't aim that much further from where they are. And in order for our species to make the jump in evolution that is necessary at this moment, all of us are going to have to aim a little higher together with a positive frame of mind about whether we are going to attain it or not. Because if we don't, if we don't focus our thinking, if we don't create a shared reference point, we are going to succumb to the strategies of those that are more intelligent than us, more devious, and more committed to attaining what they are aiming at. And that is full control of this world, full control of the media, full control of the money systems, full control of you and me in a manner that would sicken most human beings today if they knew the true depth of their devious plans. So one of the questions of this expression is how much of the truth are you willing to accept about this? Because for the most part, what I have said has gone beyond the boundaries of most people's thinking, belief, or desire to understand. We don't want to come to grips with the prison that we are in. We can still live a pretty good life if we just keep to ourselves, focus on what we truly want for ourselves and not involve ourselves in international politics or any type of politics. And there's a lot of people out there who have created great lives within this larger system, but are now coming to the comprehension that they lived a lie in terms of what they believed, in terms of what they thought this larger governing, governing infrastructure was. And when you finally get it, when you finally realize the depth of the lie It has a lot to do with how much truth do you really seek? What do you really want to know? And then once you have figured it out, then what are you going to do about it? You see, I think we got to build a whole new world. I think we have to design something that's outside of their world, the ones who control us. If we don't build it ourselves and make sure that it's built upon a foundation of aligned principles with the laws of the universe, the real ones, then we're gonna fool ourselves 
we have to start using the deeper wisdom of the indigenous people and the past civilizations that were in alignment with this world, this beautiful Mother Earth we are on, and rid ourselves of the brainwashing that technology without morality is going to lead us somewhere where we want to go. Our species is headed in a very cold direction. And if you look at the real reasons behind social distancing, the mask, the lockdown right now, the deeper reasons is they want to force us apart, create more separation, create less love, create less fun, less joy. Because then we feel separated, we feel depressed, we cannot do what we need to do, which is rise up in a manner which they can't stop and take back control of this world and instill new governance systems that are in alignment with living a good life for everybody and not have some oppressive big brother government trying to instill rules at every level that we exist within. That's not life. And that's not what I want to give to the grandchildren and grandchildren's grandchildren. We have to leave a legacy that is better than we came into. And if we don't, our species will stop existing. We'll kill ourselves from our stupidity and greed. And that's the level of the severity that we're facing in the moment. And if you don't realize this, you are asleep. So I have to be very careful about what I personally want to participate in. There's a lot of people in a lot of situations that say they want to change the world and say that they want to bring their gifts into the world, but they have no idea what those gifts are and they have no idea how to work together. They don't have an operating system. So those that are in control and they're so much more organized than us, win. They win because their architecture, their infrastructure is more powerful and more intelligent than ours. We don't have one. So we have to build one. And to build one, it takes a number of people paying attention to higher teachings and if you're interested in those teachings, then contact me because that's the offering I have. I have a methodology, tools, process to organize human beings to defend themselves from a parasitic, oppressive over system that is now coming to its end as we build something for ourselves that gets rid of these people or whatever types of beings they are.